Okay, let's fasten our seatbelts. Today I'm driving with Xun Zhao. I'm getting nervous about this. We have a colleague from Auto Navi and a cameraman in the back. Let's hit the road. The green light is really far away. That's impressive. For me, I need to move my head a bit to even see it because the bus in front of us is blocking my view. There's a traffic jam ahead of us. It'll take some time to pass. Following a car at low speed works well when you don't want to change lanes, but in general, lane changing has improved a lot compared to LCC. This function is very helpful in city traffic jams. The biggest challenge for lane changing in traffic jams is that the vehicles next to you won't make way for you if you choose to change lanes. That's the tricky part. When I drive to work every day, everyone is inching their way forward in every possible way. The voice assistant should send a notice saying that I can't change lanes now. We will introduce a low speed trailing mode so that in heavily congested traffic, the voice assistant will ask the driver to assist with that maneuver. So that is already being developed? Yes, during the first stage, we will focus on providing services on both main and secondary roads in the city. It will learn so fast that there will be multiple iterations each day. So I believe it will advance far faster than human learning. It will take a few years for the machine to catch up with the best human drivers. The car on the right is trying to merge into our lane. Ha, the car is giving it some space. It's slowing down to 10 kilometers an hour to let it through. Smart move. Now it's moving back to the center of the lane. Good decision. A lot of level 4 beta cars can only be driven on specific roads. How does CNGP compare? I think different companies have different approaches. Uh, Robotaxi companies choose to have a different approach. Their goal is to achieve zero takeovers as easily as possible and achieve the highest level of safety. That's why most autonomous driving companies operate their fleet in relatively simple driving scenarios. But for us, this function is designed to assist drivers. So we have to be able to handle the most difficult driving scenarios. That's why we have a different approach, um, like we elaborated last year on 1024 Tech Day. Look, I'm even wearing a t-shirt from 1024 Tech Day. Oops, I should have worn the same shirt. <laughs> Thus far, I feel very comfortable using CNGP on congested roads. How is CNGP performing at night? or even on rainy nights. Well, because from the beginning we started full stack development in-house, even with LCC we were already solving for these issues, training for weather, street lights and night conditions, lots of corner cases. Thanks to our closed loop data, our camera perception is doing very well. We've already run plenty of test drives with the help of LiDARs. We are less likely to be affected by rainy weather because LiDAR is an active light source sensor. One of the challenges for LiDAR is when there is heavy rain. Raindrops will bounce back from the road. The LiDAR needs to recognize whether or not these are permanent obstacles. We've done a lot to help these vehicles recognize that these are just liquids. I see. What about mud or dust? Can the vehicle handle that? It sure can. Now we are entering a tricky situation where cars from the sides are merging into the middle lanes. Oh, this is strange. The CNGP is not telling me where I need to go while the car behind us is losing patience and now it's overtaking us. Okay, now the car can go to the right lane, but it's not doing so. Okay, now the right turn light is on. So the car is very cautious, more so than a human would be. It'll wait until our right side is clear with no car approaching from behind. Not necessarily. Our algorithm saw pedestrians on the right side and decided to become extra careful. It's good to see that our vehicle is responding immediately when the cars around us are speeding up quickly. We believe the city driving scenarios is when LiDAR is crucial. LiDAR is the best not only for recognizing but also tracking objects around you, as well as predicting their movements. It would be challenging if we used only cameras and radars, especially when it comes to static obstacles. LiDAR is able to easily recognize these static objects and avoid them. I have to say, we are the only company in the world who managed to develop city-level ADAS functions based on only 20 to 30 tops of computing power. But we also have limitations. For certain specific situations, the computing capabilities are simply not enough. That's true. Currently, we are improving our ability to recognize people who are lying down, who are sitting in a wheelchair, or who are squatting. 
you can't rule out the possibility, uh, we use LiDAR to help us identify these objects. So if there's an animal on the road, a pothole, or maybe a sign that says there are potholes, can it recognize that? Yes, it can. It can recognize signs and animals, but it is not really good with potholes. Will G9 be able to do this? It most certainly will. So, for example, if something falls off from the car in front of us, say a box or a package, can it recognize that? Yes, it can. Because LiDARs can detect where we can or can't drive. The vehicle will slow down or drive around an obstacle. Many functions can be achieved with LiDARs. For camera vision, first you need to train it with many models to recognize a box. Whereas for LiDAR, the 3D sensor will tell you what's your drivable space, regardless of what object might be in your path. This is where LiDARs are very useful. Two follow-up questions. What if there is very strong hail outside, say hailstones as large as like 3 centimeters? I think CNGP should then be turned off. <laughs> in that case, the vehicle should send out a notification to the driver to turn off CNGP. Don't forget to add this in the next version. The vehicle follows three parameters for decision making. The first is LiDARs, uh, to tell you where the drivable space is, uh, given the objects around you. The second is lane markings, as lane markings are the least likely to change. The third are the curbs and crash barriers, or the moving cars beside you. These three parameters can influence how your car will move. For example, left turns. In most cases, we won't follow lane markings. Instead, we refer to the moving cars beside you. We need to let the bus through. It's nice to see that the vehicle did not brake too hard, but it should not have stopped completely. Yes, but uh, we are handling very carefully when big vehicles are around. And the bus had the left turn signal on. The complete stop was wrong here. The vehicle turned out to be less smart when there are big vehicles around. The taxi driver is looking at us because we're driving like amateurs. So far I have not taken over even once. After the car braked for the bus, it took way too long to resume the previous speed. It was not responding quickly enough when there were big vehicles approaching. It was really not necessary to slow down to zero. Here it's not driving as well as I would. We arrived at Canton Tower. I took over only once during the ride. In general, I feel very comfortable using city NGP when driving in straight lanes or in heavy traffic. That is where CNGP is driving like an experienced driver. The unprotected left turns were also handled very well, like a prudent driver. However, there are two aspects that need to be improved. When there's a car approaching from the side, it's not necessary for the car to stop. Now when the car does stop and wants to start moving again, that should not take more than half a second to one and a half seconds. The second thing that should be improved is the driving experience when surrounded by a lot of traffic or pedestrians. Then the third problem is the buses. When the bus tried to cut in front from the right hand side, the car acted like a little kid that got scared of a big adult. It's important to understand that only when an ADIS function can assist you seamlessly and can coordinate other functions in your car can the vehicle truly be called a smart vehicle. The so-called smart vehicles before that are only in their initial stages. They did have many smart functions, but that's not enough. It needs to become a seamless experience every time it is used. I agree. But I am very confident that we are surpassing all the competitors in China. The most challenging part of developing CNGP is that we are not able to find a car that can serve as a comparison. When developing autonomy in China, we don't have any benchmarks. We can only compare ourselves to experienced drivers, and that is a very high standard to meet. We hope later on we can compare ourselves to level 4 companies and provide a real level 4 driving experience at merely the cost of a mass-produced car. For now we can focus on the two problems I mentioned earlier. Sure.